Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Brave Files. I'm your host, Heather Vickery, and I'm so excited to say Happy New Year. I personally am very slowly emerging from the break. I took a very thoughtful, intentional, almost three-week break to hang out with my kids, to have some time alone, to recoup, to regenerate, all that good stuff. I kind of feel like a baby bird with my eyes barely open, but I can tell that there's something out there and I'm eager to see it. How about you? How were your holidays? Well, before we get back to our regularly scheduled episodes, I have a little New Year's love note from my heart to yours. Now we can do the intro. <clears throat> the intro music and stuff. You knew what I meant, right? Okay. All right, friends. As 2022 came to a close and 2023 opened its doors, I found myself reading, well, uh, listening. I like to listen to memoirs. I was listening to a book called Wintering by Catherine May. Now, this book has been on my to-be-read list for quite some time now. And when it finally became available, right as the new year slipped, <clears throat> I'm going to do that last bit again. And when it finally became available, right as one year slipped slowly into another, I knew that the universe had put it in my path at exactly the right time. The library for the win, right? I, I am in love with my library. I get all my audiobooks from the library and all of my hardback paper books from the library. You guys use your local library. They're so cool. Anyway, in wintering, Catherine May talks about the times in our lives where we are required to shut down, slow down, rest, step away from the hustle of life. Essentially, it's an opportunity to treat ourselves, our bodies, and our lives the same way nature does in winter. And often this happens uh, without our consent or our knowledge. Things happen in the world around us and our family and our lives that are beyond our control. And we then are required to sort of shut down. And as she calls it, quote unquote, winter. And May shares that we may experience wintering at any stage of our life. And some years, several times in one year. I think it's fair to say that we all may have been experiencing several winters, likely even without our knowledge for the last few years. Maybe that's what made 2022 so hard for many of us. It wasn't just me. I heard it from all of you over and over and over again. Why was 2022 such a challenging year? And you know, that really leaves us with this idea that um, we can celebrate and grieve at the same time. We can grow and be sad at the same time. We can experience joy and still heartache at the same time. We can always have all of those mixed emotions. But when we start to recognize our cues, when it's time to move into a quote unquote winter, it's really powerful. And I loved hearing that gift from this book from Catherine May. But what really struck me the most while listening was that what actually happens to nature in the winter is not what I thought it was. See, I've had a very complicated relationship with winter and with fall. Um, if you've listened to this podcast from the beginning, you may remember an episode I did many years ago called True Colors. If you haven't heard it, you can go back, search on whatever your favorite podcast player app is and listen to it. And I also talk about it in my book, Fuck Fearless, where I've always had this complicated relationship with fall and winter because... Um, I have a very deep empathetic feeling. I feel sad. I think see things dying. Um, maybe though what I think I'm learning is it's more about transitions. Transitions are hard. Change, although the only constant we have, is a very difficult thing for some people and it is for me. I like change. I embrace change, but I still experience grief in that process of change. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> oh. 
<sighs> so essentially letting go is hard for me. And it might be that way for a lot of you. But what I learned, and I, I can't believe I'm 48 years old, and I feel like I should have learned these things in school at some point, but I never did. That nature really, really doesn't die. It's just transformation, just like us, right? So what we talk about, what I talk about in True Colors and in the book is something I learned from my now 16-year-old when she was, I think, eight, which is that the color the trees are in the fall is their natural color. When they're bright green, it's because they're filled with chlorophyll. And as that chlorophyll leaves, their true colors shine through. And then what I just learned with Catherine May's book, Wintering, is that um, the buds never go away. Did y'all know that? Like, I need to hear from some of you who are really familiar with this and who know a lot about nature and how it works, because I really want to explore this more. But even when the trees, and I'm looking out my window right now, and I see all the, the branches, and gosh, they look like they could just crack right off, but the buds, they're there, and they have a protective coating around them. All they're doing is regenerating. They're getting ready for their bloom in the spring. What I learned is that nothing really dies during the winter. Nature is so brilliant that it's using this time to carefully, intentionally, and gracefully rest, regenerate, and then start fresh. And I loved that. That felt so intuitive to me. First of all, it gives me permission to A, feel sad during transformations, during transitions, but also not to grieve um, winter because I can look at it from a totally different perspective and I can apply it to myself. It hits me that as a society, we push ourselves so deeply into the creation and invention process of the new year, right? New year, new you, vision boarding, goal setting, planning, strategic planning. And I've always struggled with it and I couldn't really understand why. And now that I do, it's such a breath of fresh air to say, whoa, hold on, maybe for me and perhaps for you, many of you, this isn't the time for all of that creation. Maybe this is the time f to, you know, kind of curl up, to hibernate a little bit for self-reflection. There's so much bravery in choosing that. And I find for me, a lot of my bravery presents itself in saying this thing I always thought was true. Maybe it's not true. Maybe I can look at it differently. I can feel differently about it. I can choose differently. I'm not stuck unless I decide to be, right? So now that I know why, for me, I've decided that my body, my mind, and my soul, they're not ready for a January hustle. I'm ready to just curl up and rest. I want to gain some clarity and come back stronger, healthier, and better in the spring. And so I'm going to do things differently this year. And you guys remember, you've heard this before, my number one rule is, what is it? That there are no fucking rules, right? I mean, listen, I did a lot of planning and growing in the last half of 2022, I prepped to launch the incubator, which I am incredibly excited about it. Um, we are starting the incubator this week, which is great. It means that I'm no longer in the creation phase, though. I'm in the implementation phase, at least professionally. And as we begin this 16-week coaching experience, um, I'm excited, so excited to work with and support this incredible group of folks in this first cohort it feels like a gift and the timing, as always, seems divine. Uh, not a sales pitch, but if you're curious about the incubator or you wanted to know more, we'll do it again in August. You can join the wait list right now. Visit vickeryandco.com slash incubator to get on the wait list. Oh, I will get to explore with these folks. I'm guiding them through this 16-week process, but I'm going to learn so much about myself as we do it. And that's one of the things I love about my work as a transformational success coach is that I have the unique opportunity to take myself through these stages and phases of learning and growth and exploration along with my clients. I'm a, a few steps ahead in many cases, in most cases, but that doesn't mean um, that I can't also transform and grow while supporting them on that journey. And as for me and my strategic planning and goal setting and vision boarding and all of the other stuff that normally comes with a fresh start, that's all going to wait until the spring. 
Instead, I'll be using these next three months to learn more about myself, my deepest desires, who I want to be in the coming months, and what I want my business to look and feel like. And gosh, feel like is a really important part of that statement. How do I want to feel in my life? How do I want to feel in my business? How do I want to feel as I move around the world? Gosh, oh, it's exciting. I kind of have chills just just thinking about it. I'm going to continue to learn. I'm finishing up my human design certification program. So excited to be certified in that. I cannot wait to keep sharing human design with all of you. In fact, in um, a few weeks, I'm going to be interviewing uh, Kyla, who is my human design coach and mentor. And I can't wait to share that journey with all of you. It's going to be so much fun. She's hilarious and I enjoy her. So you guys are going to love it too. And what I do now is I'm inviting you to consider what time of year feels most aligned to you. Maybe it is the new year. That's cool. You do you. Maybe it's the lunar new year. Maybe it's your birthday. Maybe it's the spring like me following that path of nature. It could be anything you decide. Because remember, as my friend and former client, BJ used to always say, every day is a Tuesday. You don't have to follow the path unwittingly. You don't have to just do something because it's always been done that way. You don't have to um, do what everybody else is doing. You get to design it and create it. So that's that brave method, right? That's my strategic coaching method, which is make sure you're reassessing, make sure you're looking at the way things make you feel and what you want more of and what you want less of. What feels really aligned to you? You have permission to say, fuck the way it's always been done. You get to make up the rules, my love. You're in charge. Build it any way you want to. Now, this may mean my wintering. I'm going to keep wintering. That you'll see a little bit less of me on social media. But don't worry, I'm here. I'm paying attention. I'm observing. I'm interacting. I'm learning and growing. And I've always been doing that. And as I shared with some of you who who follow me on social media, um, I have switched sort of to an intuitive-based social media approach, both emails and on Instagram, TikTok, wherever you find me. I miss Twitter, but I had to let go of Twitter for my own soul and well-being. Anyway, um, I'm doing all of this intuitively, and so I will definitely still be around, but I am allowing myself to not feel the pressure of hustle and push. We're going to just sit in this space. And when I feel like I have something I really want to share with you, you're definitely going to know that it's out there. And don't worry, the Brave Files will be back on schedule with the next episode. And in the meantime, you can always, and not even in the meantime, even while you're actively listening to this awesome show, you can always check out the amazing interviews Alan Seals and I have been doing and will continue to do on Was It Chance? That's the podcast about embracing opportunity and taking intentional risk for your creative life. We did a really fun recap of the last year. Go check that out. We're silly, but we talk about all of our favorite moments and incredible guests. So I hope that you do also add Was It Chance to your regular listening rotation. My loves, we've been doing this together for a very long time now, nearly five years, over 250 episodes. It's so amazing to me. God, we've had incredible stories of everyday bravery, so much love and connection, gratitude, new and creative ways to celebrate, gosh, wonderful charities to consider supporting. I want to thank you for being on this journey with me. I want to thank you for sticking around and telling your friends about it, writing reviews and, um, letting me know what resonates with you. God, when you listen to an episode and something really speaks to you and then you message me and tell me that, it's incredible. It makes this hard work worth it because podcasting is awesome, but it takes a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of effort. Um, so when you tell us that you love it, when you write those reviews, when you subscribe, when you share it with your friends, it means the whole world. It really, really does. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for showing me your love. I love you deeply and truly from the bottom of my heart. So until next time, this is Heather Vickery reminding you today and every single day to go out and choose bravely. Bye now.